Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Right off the bat on the old show today. Remember when we talked about this particular vehicle, the Golf R400? Which is basically going to be, well, a little bit of a tip of the hat to the World Rally car. Going to be all-wheel drive and had a turbocharged four-cylinder. It was going to be putting out 400 brake horsepower. There's a lot of rumblings that apparently that lump is going to be making a lot more smoke than we anticipated. And there's a lot of talk that this thing is going to be making well north of 400 brake horsepower. So very, very excited. This vehicle is going to be a tremendous piece of kit, so cannot wait to hear the official numbers from, from the Volkswagen Group that will hopefully be coming out very, very soon. Next up on the list, well, if you've ever known about the Isle of Man TT, and if you ever want to scare yourself really bad and see folks and fellas and gals that have some real attachments put on them that Go check out anything on YouTube, the Isle of Man TT. In the Isle of Man, there's a big stretch of public road that they shut down every year, and they race motorcycles on this thing. This is extremely high-speed stuff with a lot of stone walls all around it. It is properly pucker time, if you will, as far as it's just watching it. But these folks that actually do it are just amazing, amazing folks, because I wouldn't even remotely think of doing anything like this. Well, apparently, a couple of years ago, in fact, I think I actually reported on this particular deal, the Ohio Man TT four-wheel record was actually set by a fellow by the name of Mark Higgins using the Subaru Group. And the Subaru actually put this deal together. Mark Higgins, a long-time rally guy. Now, Mr. Higgins, who is a Brit, actually made this time in 19 minutes and 56.7 seconds, so just a shy under 20 minutes. Well, apparently, Mark Higgins and Subaru are going to make their return to the Isle of Man with the brand new WRX, and they're planning on breaking that four-wheel record for this particular race course. So, be very, very exciting to see just how much quicker, because there's a lot of things that I've heard, especially there's some videos on the old interwebs with old Tommy Mackinnon. I think I had it up on the Facebook page. Tommy Mackinnon, who was... World Rally champion many times and ended up his career in a Subaru World Rally car. Actually got to drive the brand new Subaru for Subaru of Canada, actually here in the United States. And he was just head over heels thinking that it was way better than the outgoing model. So it'll be very exciting how Mr. Higgins gets on at the Isle of Man TT. And last, or next up on the list, I should say... This is an interesting story. The folks over at McLaren are actually mulling over building a track version of the P1. I thought that the existing P1 was pretty track focused, but apparently McLaren's got a lot of ways to go. And this is definitely what you see out of an organization that builds race cars for a living. Now, this particular group, apparently they're going to take all the niceties out of this vehicle, strip all the weight there ever was to get out of this vehicle. It'll be very, very interesting. I love when automobile companies do this kind of thing. So, very interesting to see what McLaren may have up their sleeve. A track-focused P1. I just didn't think there was a need for one, but I am very excited to hear more about this coming soon. And now, last up on the list, we're going to talk about sales, especially April sales, finally for the U.S. market. And it had a pretty good month in the month of April. 1.38 million units were sold across the United States. That's up 3.8% year over year. But the SAR, the Seasonal Annual Adjusted Rate, actually took a tad bit of a hit as it was up over 16 million units. The SAR actually tracking the course of actual sales, and if it continue on like it would, it would end up with this particular number, which is now at 15.98 million, which is pretty close to the 16 million units, still some of the best year. Uh, we're getting ready to have the best year we've had in many, many years, especially since the economic downturn. And then let's talk a little bit about global sales, especially global sales in the month of March, which actually reached a record at the entire world sales in the automobile industry came in at five or 8.5 million units for the world, which is up 4%. That was year over year, which is a pretty impressive moment. 
showing that the rest of the world of the automotive industry is really leading the charge as we come out of this economic downturn. Also, we'll talk a little bit about the first quarter for the actual worldwide market and global sales. It's actually for the first quarter, the first three months of 2014, 22 million units were sold over the entire uh, global market. And here's the interesting thing. You know how much everybody focuses in on China and whatnot as far as automobile sales? Well, apparently 47% of that 22 million were sold in the Asian market. So this shows you how much the Asian market is really growing by leaps and bounds. A lot of people are talking like it's getting to its peak, but it's not 100% there yet, or at least hasn't gone down as of much as we've seen as of yet. So very interesting deal, and it shows that the automobile industry is alive and strong in the worldwide global economy. And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. If you want to jump on over to the Facebook page, the link's down in the show notes. Also, if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time and get the first dibs on the brand new shows as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again real soon.